I think one of the few interesting things about that whole thing was it was what got me into website creation for, for music. So I had a when the internet came in and you know you, you could reasonably easily buy web space. Um, I, I think I was desperate to get a web presence, but not entirely sure what to do with it. So the initial idea was to create a website for the Pooh Heads and uh, obviously put all my songs up on uh, online and be discovered and make a million dollars and not have to work anymore. And um, anyway, the latter part of that sense never happened, but the former did. So I was able to get a website on the go pretty early if I, in, in when the dot-com bubble was still a bubble in uh, March 9th in 2000, I think, was when the website was first up. and. Uh, I was, it's funny how the economics have changed completely because the, um, the, the, the cost of buying the URL and the, the web space was horrendously expensive. I mean, so you could only afford a little bit of web space. So I couldn't afford two URLs. So I, I was torn because the Kokori Bands project was beginning to come into my mind about that time. But I couldn't afford a URL for both the Pooh Heads and Kokori Bands. So I had to choose which one I was going to have. So sadly, I choose, chose the Pooh Heads. So when Kokori Bands was created, it was kind of lumped in with the domain name thepooheads.com. So people had to kind of navigate into, into that to find it. Um, I mean, I have very fond memories of the Pooh Heads, and I wish we'd had a more sensible name looking back on it, because some of our stuff wasn't bad. Um, some of it was pretty bad, I must admit. Um, we, we did some interesting things. Um, a country and western version of Black Sabbath's Paranoid is one that I'm particularly fond of. Um, lots of experimenting by me just writing songs and realising that I could write songs after years of um, just doing bits and pieces. So um, that was nice. Um, and it got me into the into the Kokori Band's website and that was kind of the actual genesis of that project was wanting a web presence, not sure what to do with the web presence and then creating the, the website for the Pooh Heads and then kind of lumping in the Kokori Band's idea and then that, that kind of was the idea that um, sustained and, and still on the go today. Well, I think internet and technology changed everything. I think it is fascinating these days that, I mean, anybody can be a filmmaker, anybody can be a music maker, anybody can be a photojournalist if you use blogger.com or a camera phone photojournalist and go out and broadcast your stuff to the world and um, it's created a lot of garbage as well as a lot of good stuff so the, the, the trick is to try to find the good stuff through the garbage and um, the, the classic when I say this statement the classic example that pops into my head is that if you google if not if you google if you do a search on uh, YouTube um, for Kokori there's this this little clip that, that's had so many plays it amazes me how many plays this clip's had and it's basically a bunch of drunk guys walking down the high street shouting Kokori pub crawl Kokori pub crawl <laughs> I'm thinking, what a waste of cyberspace, you know, it's, um, it's terrible really, but it amazes me that the actual, I mean, talking about when poohheads.com went up, it was so expensive, and now basically YouTube's free and the cost of storage is so little now that you can put all this garbage up, but um, what's interesting as well is that I'm hoping that what we're proving in, in the web projects that we're doing just now is that the, the technology enables you to do a lot of interesting things as well and the, the real trick is, and maybe search engines are going to improve to, to do this, is to find the good stuff for, from the rubbish. And uh, so it's a real power of enabling. I mean, I, I'd never have been able to do recording on my own and I've written a few songs actually on this, using this machine here and some equipment I've got here actually, uh, a, a little solo project and I've been a little distracted from that project because Kokori Bands has been so much work over the last few months but um, my view of, of the technology and internet in particular is that uh, it's a great enabling force in terms of, of musicians and you know it can amplify a little bit of talent you have to um, actually create something that sounds like uh, almost a finished uh, piece of music it's, it's amazing and, and you can get your film or your your ideas or your music out to a global audience in seconds. So it's 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 fascinating stuff, and I can't wait to see what the future holds with this technology. Mm. Well, what I, I think um, the 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 I've been blown away by the interest levels in the Kakodi Bands project, and really gratified by the amount of people helping me with it. Um, 
I think what I'd like to do is, is do a larger documentary and this, um, this little test film is, is really uh, part one of hopefully a much larger project and this will hopefully teach me how to work the software. And I remember my, my dad was a great biker in the 60s, he had lots of British motorbikes, um, aerial leader I remember was one bike he had, was called. And um, I remember him buying his first motorbike for 20 years when he just turned 40 and, and I just turned 40 a year and a half ago so I kind of think of Kirkcaldy Bands as a bit like my motorbike, you know, I'm, I'm terrified of motorbikes so I wouldn't go near one. Um, but the website's a little bit like, um, you know, a bunch of 40-somethings reliving their past and uh, that's, that, that's good, I mean I'm living every second of it but you can't, you can't live in the past so I'd like to really enhance it, make it the definitive place for all the where all this music's going to live for forever, you know, un uncovering unheard of demos or demos that have been unheard for 20 years and archiving them on the site.